Hello, everyone, and welcome to Unboxing Umbraco 10.2, the show where we unbox the very latest Umbraco release, take a look at some of the highlights, get a demo of a couple of features, and uh, just have a general chat about what's going on with this release. In order to help me out uh, today, I've invited a couple of uh, my colleagues. Um, first up is uh, Matt. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, thanks. Uh, my name is Matt. I am a front-end developer at the CMS team at Umbraco. And we also have... Warren. Um, yeah, so I work on the developer relations team over here at uh, Umbraco HQ, getting everything uh, with the developers and the community, joining those together. And who are you, Runa? Maybe I well, gave it I away. Am... <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert. I am uh, Rune. Uh, I work in the communications department. Uh, I handle uh, much of our product communications, uh, including release communication, uh, unboxing videos and such. Um, but let's just dive into it. We actually have quite a lot to cover. Um, doesn't look by the count of, uh, number of uh, PRs. Uh, I think it's 41 for this release, like a massive release, but there is a couple of uh, really nice features in there. And uh, one big one, we could say a big highlight, is um, an improvement to um, language variants um, and uh, how you can actually start setting permissions for these. And uh, Mass, I think you've prepared a little demo for us. I so did. if you'd like to, to take it away. Let me get the shine working. Um, the zoom on thing. Cool. So uh, the first demo here uh, I want to show is the is a feature uh, with a very long title, but it's the possibility to edit uh, invariant properties on the non-default language. And what does that mean? <laughs> so currently, uh, let's see in uh, my solution here, I have a uh, an Abraco uh, with two languages. Uh, I have the English one, which is the default language, and I have a Danish one, uh, which is the non-default. And uh, up until now, uh, in Obraco, it has only been possible to uh, to edit uh, what we call invariant uh, property values or values that are uh, that are shared across all of the languages on the default one. Uh, but with this new uh, feature, uh, you can in your app settings set a config. Uh, I don't remember the name, but uh, I'm sure it will be in the blog post, and that allows mm -hmm. you to. And that allows you to uh, to edit uh, shared properties on every uh, language. Let's see how it looks. So I have a home node here, and I have a couple of different uh, properties. Right now I'm on the English language, uh, which was uh, the default one. And you can see there's a small new feature here that when you hover each of these uh, properties, you can see where uh, it comes from, this value comes from. So the first one uh, can vary. This one is on the, uh, 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 the English uh, uh, language. And the second one uh, now has a shared uh, label here. So that one is shared across all of them. Uh, you can also see that there's now uh, this overlay, which tells you that the media picker property is shared across all languages. And now I can edit this one. Uh, but if I go to my Danish one, which is the non-default, I see the same UX. So now I can actually edit uh, the shared value here. I can update it here. And I can go back to the English one and the values uh, updated across all languages. Very nice. And I guess like the, the really big improvement here is that previously um, when you were using language variants, you could only edit shared properties or invariant properties on the default language, right? Or the exactly. Yeah. And moving further into uh, the language permission features, which is kind of built on top of this one. Uh, we can now, if we go into the uh, user section and go into the user groups, and my user is part of the administrator uh, user group, so I will make the changes here. You will now see a new option uh, down here where you can uh, select which languages this user group has access to. Uh, and in, in, uh, in this version, it's uh, read access and write access. Um, as default, 
uh, all user groups uh, has access to all languages. Uh, so that's how it used to be. Uh, but I can now untoggle this one, and then I can specify in here which languages this specific user group uh, can access. Uh, and I want to make the Danish one read only, so I will leave that out for now and save here. Now, when we go back to content and we go back to home, the English version looks and works the exact same as it used to. I can go in here and I can edit all the values. Let's discard that one. But if I go into the Danish one, we'll now see some of the property editors look a little bit different. I cannot update the values in here. And this property editor, I can't even click the buttons. Um, and if I dive into uh, the blog editor, I cannot update the values in here as well. Fantastic. Yeah, but we still allow that you can copy the values from all of the property editors, because if you want to translate some of the uh, uh, the values in here, it's nice that you can uh, you can copy the value and paste them into uh, into another language. And it, you can also still use uh, some of the uh, uh, some of the property action, which uh, mm. allows you to to copy uh, the value here. And right, so you can actually copy copy a block uh, item from a language that you don't have uh, edit access to to, uh, yes. to another language. Exactly. That's really cool. Nice. And I'd see that being useful yeah. for split view as well. So when you have like the, the language that you don't have access to, but you're trying to translate from uh, and the language that you do, then obviously you can copy stuff over from one side to another, so to speak. Yeah. And that leads us into the last feature for from this language permission. And that is uh, the read only property uh, editors. And that's a new uh, option that you can uh, opt into as part of your property editor manifest, uh, where you can allow, uh, or you can tell us that this, uh, this property editor uh, supports a read only mode. It will uh, make it possible for, for any uh, developer who, uh, who develops property editors to make a special mode of the property editor where, they, uh, where you can dive into your property editor and only do the things that are allowed uh, when it's read only. Um, so uh, in the previous version of Umbraco, uh, we would put an overlay on top of things that uh, you couldn't interact with. Uh, so that would prevent you uh, for actually diving into a block list editor or a grid or something like that. Uh, you and you couldn't even highlight text, right? You couldn't even highlight text. Uh, but with this new uh, read only mode, uh, Every property editor developer uh, can uh, check for this uh, when they uh, develop uh, develop their property editor and uh, and make a special version. And uh, we have done that for all the core property editors. So everything you find in core uh, supports read only. I think that was all. Nice. Wow, that was a whirlwind of uh, pretty <laughs> pretty exciting stuff for for uh, language variants. Um, and it all ties very nicely together. So I, I guess you almost couldn't do one without the other, uh, right? They, they no, kind we, of had to be done together. Yeah, we quickly found out that uh, they were all built on top of each other, uh, all the features. So uh, so they came in bulk. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's also, uh, I don't think you mentioned it, but I think it's important to say that for the, um, for the read-only um, uh, stuff, no, for the shared properties, uh, it will work the same way as, as it always has, right? If 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 you only upgrade your installation, yes. So the new default is um, uh, is that you can edit uh, across uh, the the invariant properties across all languages. But if you upgrade, it'll still work uh, as as you used to. Um, yeah, you can go in and configure it and then change it to uh, to work in in the new uh, in the new way. And the same for, for property editors. If you don't support a read-only mode uh, for property editors, we will put an overlay on top of them uh, so you can interact with the property editors. Uh, so you don't have to run out and uh, develop a read-only mode, but uh, <laughs> to improve the editor experience, we would really encourage uh, everyone to, uh, to do that. Yeah, I think yeah. it makes sense uh, if you're building uh, property editors uh, to kind of start opting into this now. Yeah, definitely. For sure. Um, and I, I mean, I guess it, when you upgrade, the only thing you'll you'll see that changes really is the uh, is the labels, 
right? Yeah. Um, that's that's pretty much the only thing you'll get out of the box, uh, I guess, yeah. unless you opt into to the other features uh, or start setting permissions for um, for the languages. Amazing! Thank you very much, Mas. That's cool. Nice work. Very nice. Thank um, you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Warren, I think you uh, you have also something language related to uh, to them. Yes, uh, I will kind of follow up. Uh, from Mads, uh, and basically this uh, feature is very much in the same vein and in terms of languages and language permissions, is that most likely if you're doing a cross-site uh, uh, translation that you're going to be using dictionary items. So the same language permissions work for dictionary items. So I am a different uh, editor here, and my editor only has uh, right access to the Danish language, if I remember, if I set it up correctly. So I can change the values of uh, here, the Danish uh, dictionary items, uh, but I can't change any other languages that I don't have access to. So super really nice feature, just extending that flow of what Mads just demoed um, yeah, in, into the dictionary section. Yeah, yeah, and, and you can still uh, copy and paste um, yeah. from the read-only properties. Very nice. So super nice. Uh, and then following on from that, whilst we're in the dictionary section, uh, again, another quality of life improvement. Um, you're probably going to have more than two dictionary keys uh, if you're going to do a proper translated website uh, rather than demo where. Uh, so you might want to actually search for a key or filter this list to find that key quickly. Uh, so I can just start typing. Uh, I'll see H for header and home. And then if I start typing E, I obviously get the results as we type. So uh, super nice. Again, another quality of life improvement for editors just to kind of find what they need to be finding. So uh, very nice feature. Yeah, that's a, an, a, that's a community uh, PR, I think, right by Johannes Lantz, yes. if I remember correctly. Yes. Lantzify. Right. <laughs> that's the one. Um, and it's these kind of small uh, polish and improvement that makes a better product for everyone. Um, yeah. Definitely. It may seem trivial, but uh, it does make a big impact. It's also, I mean, it's a list view, so it almost it looks like it, it was missing. <laughs> yep. the, the little filter you have everywhere else. But yep, it kind of looked like we forgot it, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> so it makes perfect sense. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, so the next thing that I wanted to demo uh, is that if I just log out of my... Uh, other user and go back in as myself as the admin, if I can remember my password. <laughs> uh, so under packages, um, we've added again, this is a tiny trivial thing, but under the list of installed packages, we now list out or purposely display the version number of the package that you've got installed. Super useful. Uh, again, I know it's trivial, but you can see that the starter kit doesn't have a version set. You can see uh, Bjarka's map doesn't have a version set. So I would go back to uh, the CMS team and uh, recommend that they update these packages. <laughs> so, uh, but why is this useful? Um, because uh, one, obviously it will make people or package editors or developers aware that yeah, a version can be set. But we use this version number for our telemetry data. So you know, recently we've added all that telemetry info that you kind of opt into. Um, we get to know what specific version of a package is installed. Uh, so if we can, package developers can set this, then uh, we get more uh, useful data rather than just uh, tag helpers was installed. It's nice to know that version 0.8 or is, is more popular than 0.2 or whatever. Uh, again, so mm -hmm. it's it's super useful to just display this. It's a trivial thing, but um, so you can set that uh, if you don't know already, it's a new-ish property that landed, I don't know, a couple of versions ago now, but um, you can set that in the package manifest JSON file, yeah. or you can set that programmatically uh, in C-sharp. Um, and I will just quickly show you, because for example, my package here, this tag helpers one, it doesn't add a dashboard, it doesn't add a property editor, it doesn't add a content app. So it's not really an Umbrico, Umbrico package, it's a class library. So there's no real sense uh, of adding a package manifest. So there is a kind of, not a workaround, but an alternative approach. Um, so I have a 
Numbraco Composer. Uh, when we kind of build our Composer and Braco website, we are add to the collection of manifest filters, and then we're just adding this manifest filter down here. And then we're just saying um, from the running assembly that is running, uh, get the version. So uh, from the DLL or the build of, or the, of the class library. So in this case, it was 0 0.8. And then we can update the manifest. Uh, so this is a way for me to then list in that installed packages way. So a useful trick to know if, uh, if you're building something similar that is a class library and not other stuff. So again, yep, that is uh, package and package versions. And then the next other trivial quality of life for maybe developers is that um, we've improved um, the builder extension. So we've got some more builder extension methods. Uh, you can see before uh, 10.2, you would have to register a tree searcher field by doing builder.services.addUnique. And then you would have to know that, okay, that this is something that I can extend. So I'd have to know that, oh, I can extend or use an Umbraco tree searcher fields um, and then add your implementation. Um, now, obviously with below, uh, we've got this builder.set tree searcher fields. Again, it's just an easier way to one, write it, and two, uh, for discoverability. So when you do builder dot, and you get IntelliSense, you can see in this list, this is the kind of things I can extend in Umbraco. So a domain helper, publish nice. snapshot, so a tree searcher builds. Uh, so the top one above, it does the exact same thing under the hood, but it's more just about discoverability and knowing what you can and can't do and extend in Umbraco. So that is it uh, from the demos that I've got. Um, I'll hand it back to you, Bruno. Yep. If I can remember how to stop sharing. There you go. And I'll, yeah, let's see, I'll just start sharing. Um, and as I mentioned, we have um, 41 PRs accepted for, for this release. Um, bunch of nice little tweaks and fixes. Uh, some accessibility uh, things have been, uh, been improved in the release. Um, continuation of uh, a lot of the, the nice localization done by uh, mainly the community. Um, we have a couple of nice performance intentions as well. Uh, I know uh, Ken that recently started at uh, Umbraco HQ has actually looked into um, if you're using uh, public access on some of your content nodes, um, if you have a lot of content, this can become quite cumbersome to work with in terms of uh, the amount of resources it, it uses. So some of the, the queries can actually uh, be quite heavy on the system. And he's done a lot of work to, um, to enhance this. So uh, for people that have a lot of content and are using public access, uh, hopefully you'll see some, uh, some performance enhancements um, in here as well. Really nice work. Um, and anyone who does, I uh, recommend you uh, dive into, um, dive into the, uh, the PR. He has done some, uh, uh, some tests on it and, and shows how, how much it's improved and stuff. It's uh, pretty cool to see. But uh, other than that, I don't think there's too much to, uh, to call out here. Uh, amazing amount of uh, bug fixes and, um, uh, and improvements. Um, and in fact, I think 50% has been uh, contributed by the community this time around, which is uh, pretty cool. Got um, 15 wonderful people who have uh, done PRs to the release. Um, and as usual, we'll just go through the list and I'm sorry, or mispronouncing <laughs> of uh, any of the names. Um, but um, we've got some new contributors. Uh, first off, we've got uh, Amber, the two PRs. We've got Lucas, Tobias, Major. Uh, so these are the, the uh, first time contributors to, uh, to uh, I think, across all of our uh, repos, actually. Right. Um, so they get a little, nice little star. Yeah, and, and then the return ones. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Congratulations. Um, uh, return ones, Garne, uh, as always, on a hot streak of contributing to every single release uh, that we do. We've got Sven Goysens, Patrick Demoy, Søren Kortal, Johannes Lance, and I think we should actually mention that uh, Johannes uh, did the one, the search filter, uh, and I think he also did another PR, right? Or was that Patrick? 
might have been Patrick. Yeah, I think it was actually Patrick. Sorry, I'll get back to that later then. Uh, Matthew, yeah, has done a, a PR. Paul, Michael Reiter, uh, Vito Rodriguez, Christian Steinmeier. Uh, and uh, for um, the one I mentioned here, Patrick, um, he actually had a really nice uh, feature that was merged and accepted but it fell through the cracks. So anyone looking forward to copying data types within the back office, a really, really useful feature, will unfortunately have to wait until um, the Draco uh, 10.3 to make use of that uh, functionality. So sorry, Patrick, and sorry to anyone who's looking forward to it, but it'll be here in um, just a month and a half uh, to get the, the copy data type functionality. So a big high five, you rock to everyone who contributed. Yeah, applause, big applause. And C, uh, as always, um, we've called, of course, planted a tree for every PR that's been uh, submitted by the community to the release, um, which helps a tiny bit in um, making our, uh, what do you say, carbon footprint on the world a little bit, little bit better. So really good to see. Cool. Um, last thing I wanted to mention before um, before we leave, let's see. you might have noticed that in um, in the past week, we or this week actually we um, we had a security advisory out um, for uh, Braco uh, nine and ten um, with a security issue um, regarding uh, the upgrade state that Braco can be in. So there's a patch version available for ten dot one and uh, 9.5. Um, so of course we recommend that everyone uh, buy the patch uh, there. And of course it's included in, in Braco 10.2 as well. So um, uh, everything will be good when you, uh, when you install this new version. That's about all we have for this time, I think. Any last words, gentlemen? No. Oh. <laughs> Was that the last word? Nope. <laughs> 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 no, I think that's a good one to end on. Thank you very much for joining me and for demoing some of the, the cool things there in this release. Um, for everyone else, uh, it's available on Umbraco Cloud. Um, all new projects uh, are running 10.2. Um, you can hit the upgrade button on existing projects. And of course, uh, for everyone else, um, it's available on NuGet. So you can get creating and upgrading uh, your projects as well. Thanks so, so much for this round, and I'll uh, see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.